I'm Katie Arred. I'm a professor at the University of Mobile, where I teach software development and digital media and advertising. There, I'm actually the faculty advisor for the Good Work Agency. It's a student-run marketing agency, a little more affordable solution for churches, nonprofits, and businesses uh, that is done completely by students. It really gives them a practical look of at marketing experience that they don't get anywhere else. And so we're a Christian university. We'd love to help you what, with whatever project you're working on. It's goodworkagency.org. And then I also am the communicate churchcommunications.com founder, and we'd love to have you in our community and just to join and be a part. People ask these kind of questions every single day. How do I get started with Facebook? How do I get started on Twitter? How do I, you know, how do I plan things out? What does a communication calendar look like? We answer these questions every single day and we'd love to help you out. And so if you have those kind of questions, you want, you're looking for a community, we would love to have you. We don't want you to do ministry alone. It's churchcommunications.com. We want to help you become a better church communicator. Welcome to Modern Church Leader, a short daily show to help you grow your church, be more effective and efficient and powerful for the kingdom of God. Yeah, so your Facebook page is really the front door to your church. Facebook pages really should be about utilizing and telling stories, right? You should be using it so that you can tell your church who you are and where you're going. So celebrate like people that are at your church. It's called Facebook. It's supposed to be about faces. Okay. I think a lot of times we forget, we think uh, Facebook is a, a bulletin board or a billboard. Facebook is not a billboard. It is a conversation. Social media is social. So let's bring back the conversation, figure out ways to engage. The more you share stories about human beings in your church, the more they're going to get shared because people love sharing good news about their friends. Ends, right? And so what I love about Facebook pages is that it's such a great opportunity for you to celebrate what God is doing in the lives of the people of your church. So there's a Facebook page, right? But not many churches are using groups and groups are different. Okay. Uh, they're a different product of Facebook. They're not the same as a page. A page is great for check-ins and it's great for sharing and it's great for that. But groups are very internal focused, right? It's a great place to, if, if you think about it as the church's, uh, the page is the front door. The Facebook group is your living room. It's a place where you can have a conversation around a topic and just explore it in an open uh, atmosphere that's more about dialogue. So you can't share things typically from a group. It is more private in a way, and it's great for creating announcements, for creating ministry groups. Uh, Don't create pages for different ministries in your church. That doesn't make sense. Pages reach is very low. So naturally, your pages reach it will be like 9% of how many people like your page. So you've got a thousand people liking your page, only like 90 people are going to see uh, a, a post traditionally, right? But with a group, it's, it's going to be much higher. So creating groups for ministries is really more important. But then again, another reason I love groups is that you can create groups for your community that have nothing to do with your church. Create groups for hiking, create groups for fishing, create groups for anything that you love doing, and then invite people into them, and then eventually move that conversation from online to offline. And then you have an opportunity to share the gospel through the relationships that you've created about something that you're passionate about. And that's what I'm passionate about. I want to enable you to share the gospel as clearly as you can and to create relationships that aren't awkward. Awkward, right? They're completely natural, but they may have started online, but now you have become a friend with them. And because of that, we know that life change happens in the context of relationship. You have the ability to speak in someone's life because you've created a relationship with them. May have started online, but it's not going to end there. So there are several different ways you can use Facebook groups for your church. And so one of those ways might be for your choir, right? You're sharing uh, choir music or sharing the songs that you're going to be singing the next week. Maybe you're sharing what you're all wearing or something like that. But another thing that you could do is create weekly topics. So ask people, what can I be praying for you every week? And then go through and pray with them. And then you'll be so surprised. Your members will join in on that prayer too. Uh, create topics about like, what are you working on? Uh, what you know, what can we be doing in our community? What's going on in our community? Why don't you share like a list of bright things going on in the community every week? And so through those things, I think you're going to find a lot of engagement. You're going to find that people really want to join in on the conversation if you just create some weekly topics and stick with them. So like maybe Monday is prayer and Wednesday is events in your community and Friday is let's look what's happening on Sunday. You know, what do we have to look forward to this weekend? 
Thanks for listening. Please review Modern Church Leader on Apple Podcasts and visit our website for more resources at tithe.ly or follow the links in the show notes.